Hello, I'm Lord Jimsical, and you're watching You Have Issues, a programme all about comics. Everyone knows that Kal-El's ship landed in Kansas, but then he grew up to become a champion of truth, justice and the American way. But what if his ship landed somewhere other than Kansas? This is a popular point in Superman's origin that writers often divert in order to create a new and interesting take on the character. Depending on where the ship landed, it could cause Kal-El to become a drastically different character due to the surroundings in which he is raised. We've seen him become an oppressor in the excellent Superman Red Sun, where his ship crash lands in a field in Ukraine. But what if his ship landed in the British countryside? You get to find out in the hilarious Superman True Brit. Superman True Brit is a story published in 2004 by DC under the now defunct Elseworlds imprint. Written by national treasure John Cleese of Monty Python and Faulty Towers fame and with art by John Byrne, this is a very witty book that shows a refreshing take on Superman, but is also an excuse to cram as many British stereotypes into a superhero story as humanly possible. Crash landing in a field in Somerset, he is found by a passing couple Jonathan and Martha Kent. The first thing they say after they decide to take him in? Oh, what would the neighbours think? It's like EastEnders with superpowers. The message left by Jarrell states to take care of Kal-El of Krypton, but they misunderstood the word Kal-El and named him Colin Clark instead of Clark Kent. Pointless gag, but there you go. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to continue referring to him as Clark. Similar to his original incarnation, he is raised on a farm and then studies journalism, but this time at Oxford University, and then moves to London to work as a reporter. But rather than a respected paper akin to the Daily Planet, instead he works for a leading tabloid newspaper. The remainder of the story then pokes fun at the British tabloid press and their reputation for scandals, persecution of celebrities, and of course the practice of making up bullshit headlines akin to sleazy rags such as The Sun and The Daily Star. Of course, the sudden appearance of Superman sends the British public into a frenzy, but more importantly, the British tabloids seek to capitalise on our hero. The story's jabs at the British press are cranked up to 11 when Superman is known to the public. Clark's idealistic hopes for a credible journalism career are hilariously shattered when Clark's boss, a nasty analogue to Perry White, orders Clark to dig up dirt on Superman. When Clark protests in the name of honest journalism, he is quickly reminded that selling papers is the most important thing in journalism, and if he values his career, he must find something on the guy. As you can imagine, this puts him in quite a sticky situation. How can he write a load of bullshit about himself? As mentioned before, this story is absolutely loaded with British stereotypes. Of course, the words, what would the neighbours think, frequently occur, as well as Clark playing cricket, and of course, showing almost everyone having a spot of tea. Also, the typical Clark Kent clumsiness isn't an act to hide his heroic persona, it's actually real. Clark in this story is such a bumbling oaf, he even manages to impale a guy during a game of cricket. With a cricket bat! Another dig at us British is that Superman has been charged with three tasks thought to be impossible akin to the Twelve Labours of Hercules. But rather than anything life-threatening or awe-inspiring, he is tasked with getting the trains to run on time, shortening NHS waiting times, and finally, cleaning up the BBC's schedule. The first two are things the English complain about most, apart from the weather. Although people only started complaining about the BBC over the last few years. If you know what I mean. Being written by John Cleese, there's naturally a few nods to some of his work, particularly Monty Python's Flying Circus. In this small montage of Clark being upset that he's forbidden to use any of his superpowers, one of which is that he is not allowed to use his super chartered accountancy, which is a reference to the Python sketch Vocational Guidance Counselor. And in a more fitting reference, when he tells his parents that he's going to move to London to pursue his dream, they ask, A bicycle repairman? Which of course references the famous sketch where people dressed as Superman are civilians and the chief superhero is a bicycle repairman. On the back of the book, the blurb has the title Faulty Powers. No explanation needed there. This book is out of print, and I was lucky enough to pick it up at a bookshop in London. Is it an important Superman book? No, not in the slightest. Is it worth a read? Well, yes, if you're after a silly story about an English Superman, then I'd definitely recommend reading it if you get the chance. Or you could just watch Man of Steel. Thank you for watching this episode of You Have Issues. I'm Lord Jimsical, and now it's time for Fill in the Blanks. Hello, thank you all for watching this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. Sorry this episode was a bit late. I've been co-writing a crossover episode I'm doing with the chaps from Let's Get Drunk and Talk Comics. Their links and whatnot are in the description below. I'm going to be doing a bi-weekly schedule from now on to give me enough time to do each video. So the next episode will be two weeks on a Wednesday. Also, I'm now on Twitch. I do weekly streams on Sundays from 7pm UK time and it's called Lazy Sundays with Lord Jimsical. I'm playing through Resident Evil Revelations at the moment and I'm about halfway through it. It would be tremendous fun if you tune in. Link to it is just there. 
Anyway, thank you all for watching. Please subscribe. Please tell your friends about You Have Issues. I'd love to have more people watching it. Thank you very much.